Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. So today's video is going to be very, very similar to the video that I did or one that I released a few months back now, which was your tracking or working out your monthly progress of where you should be on the violin. So what you should be learning and where you should be between naught and three months, what you should be learning and where you, you should be between three and six months, nine and 12 months and so on. And I went through the things that you should be learning, the technical things that you should be learning and also books and resources, um, you know, and all that kind of good stuff. And that was all the way up to about 24 months. So before I go any further in the video, I just want to mention that, um, well, firstly, I'm, if I look like I'm, I'm looking down, I am because I'm just reading off my iPad. I've made a lot of notes for this one, the same as I did with the other one. And what I'm going to be doing with this as well is putting this into a PDF format. So I'm not going to go into huge details of the technicalities of specifically what it is that you should and shouldn't be learning at what stage and what, what level, because I'm going to put all of that information in here. So I would recommend I, I would actually recommend that you go and download this. This will be free somewhere. The link will be underneath this video. Go and download this and go and go and download the PDF and you will see all the links to the resources, the books, the sheet music and everything like that I'm going to be mentioning in this video. The other kind of disclaimer thing as well is that these are my thoughts and my opinions based on the 30 odd years of being a musician, the 20 odd years of seeing hundreds of students pass through my doors as I've been teaching them. Unlike with the, the violin video that I did of this, I think I'm going to be doing this slightly differently. So whereas with the violin, it was what you should and shouldn't be doing between naught and three months, what you should be doing between, or where you should be between three and six months, six and nine months. The, the, I feel like the piano is a little bit different to that. So I'm not going to be giving you a monthly progress, but I'm going to give you stage or stroke level processes. So it's a completely different instrument with a completely different structure. And I just don't think time has the same relevance in learning the piano and as it does in the violin. Again, my, my opinion based on the way that, that, that I teach, uh, that I have been teaching my students. The second reason why I didn't really do this, this video initially alongside the violin ones was just because I felt like I was just going to be plugging my own piano books really, um, which in a sense in this video, I absolutely shamelessly totally am, but very proudly so. It takes a long time and a lot of effort to produce a book series and really think out how am I going to teach somebody to play the piano? How do I get somebody who has never even heard of a piano before, doesn't know anything about music, and how do I physically teach them? How do I break down everything that I can do into little bite-sized lessons over the course of five years? How on earth do you do that? And how do you do that successfully without missing out chunks of information, without doing it sort of half arsedly uh, you know, without just... How do you do it properly? And that's very, very difficult. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of effort. And I kind of feel like because of that, I've already done this video in a sense in those books, which is why I'm gonna be using those books and which is why I'm gonna be pulling up those books a lot throughout this video as reference, because basically I've already, I've already separated out the stages. This is what you should be doing at stage one. Well, that's basically everything in, in book one this is what you should be doing in stage two or level two, et cetera, et cetera. So I've already sat down years ago with the stage process and thought, oh, well actually I've already put that in a book. Oh, I've already done that. Let's get on with it. So stage one, that's the basics. Again, I don't want to put a time on these because I feel like learning the piano is very diff a very, very different process. I don't feel like, well, you know, you should be accomplishing the basics within one week. It doesn't work like that. It's separated out more into, it's it's just a completely different way of learning with the violin. With the violin, a lot of it, there's a lot of information that's piled on top of the other, whereas the, the piano is just perhaps a, a longer stretched out version of that. So, you know, you would you would just add to things rather than piling things on, on top or just expand on things rather than adding lots of lots of new things. So stage one, level one, the basics. So this is where I think you would start your learn to play the piano book one, which is this book that I've got coming up here. All the links to everything is gonna be underneath this video. 
So in that book that I've written, you're already gonna learn the basics like where the notes are on the piano, uh, the finger numbers, where they go on the piano, the names of the notes, the note values, bar lines, measure lines, and a few other rudimental, basic rudimental theory things. You will also begin to play hands together and basically learn your way around the piano and the music itself. So that's already been put in into that book. If you are a complete beginner, that book is gonna be for you. Whilst doing this book, uh, Learn to Play the Piano book one, I don't think there's anything else you need to add here. I don't think there are any other resources that you need to add here. I think that what I have in my book is more than enough for you. And I think adding in anything else or adding any in, in any other resources at this point is just gonna be overwhelming, confusing, and probably conflicting as well. The one thing I would say is when you do start to play the piano, whether you're looking at my books or anybody else's books, generically, whatever, don't flip between two people. Don't flip between two books because I'm gonna be saying something different. Someone else is gonna be saying something different. And at the end of the day, we're all gonna be teaching you to get to the same place. All roads lead to Rome, so to speak, but I'm gonna be taking you down that road and someone else is gonna be taking you down that road. And what I feel is, is essentially really important right now. Someone feels, nah, we'll do that a bit later on. Someone wants to teach you to read music now, I wanna do that a bit later on. So as a beginner, you just don't know whether you're coming or going really, so it gets very, very confusing. Okay, stage two for me would be playing. So at this point, I would move on to my songbook one, and the I have written tutorial books and songbook. So learn to play the piano book one is the tutorial part of it that talks you through everything, tells you how to do everything, what this is and that is, etc. And then you get a songbook that goes with it. And the songbook are pieces that help you consolidate everything that you've learned in the corresponding or the appropriate tutorial book. And it is of the exact same level. So there's gonna be nothing in songbook one that you have not covered in tutorial book one. And the point of this is that, especially at this early stage, it saves you hunting around the internet, trying to find pieces that just don't match the level. Ideally, you, you should use the songbooks after the tutorial books, and that's very, very important, especially when starting out. And you'll start to see why a little bit later on in this video as well. Stage three or level three. This is where we add in technical work, more notes and harder music. And this is where you would move on to my Learn to Play the Piano book two, which is this one here. In this book, we focus on technical work, such as scales, arpeggios, chromatics, contrary motions. You need those to be able to play anything. And this is probably where my book series differ essentially quite a lot to, to lots of the other books that, that you get out there that, um, that, that really don't do any of this. Without your technical work, you're always gonna be the bar behind the game and a subpar player. Harsh but true in my opinion. All pieces in the world are made up of scales and arpeggios, chromatic scales, etc., etc. It's just how music works. So the more of those you know and the better you can play them, the, the more pieces that, that you can play. You can play pretty much any piece that's ever been written. A little bit of theory is introduced here too. I'm not gonna go through that because you'll be able to see that in the book and in the videos. So because the music in book two is a little bit more advanced here, I feel at this point you can probably go off and see what other pieces there are available on the internet. I wouldn't do that with book one because that's gonna be too basic to start with. So you might wanna start adding in some studies like Carl Zerny piano exercises. Again, I'll put links to all that underneath. In fact, what I will probably do is make this into a PDF Put that downloadable underneath and I will put links within this. So I still wouldn't go crazy with other pieces at this point because you're still going to be in the early stages and you don't want to over overwhelm yourself. Okay, moving on to stage four, reading music mainly. Now we're on to my Learn to Play the Piano book three, which is this one here. And this is where I start teaching you to read music. And that's what the majority of the book is, is about. Up to this point, I've been writing in the letters in the book. So you can just concentrate on playing and working out what all the, what, what everything means on, on the actual page of music itself. You don't need to read it, but as long as you learn to read soon enough and you don't leave it too long, you're not gonna have a problem. So at this point, yeah, we learn to read music. This book also steps up a few things like learning a few more complicated rhythms, dotted rhythms, triplets, broken chords, and a few more technical exercises. So reading music will take up quite a lot of your time here. So I wouldn't move on until you would get it. I would focus solely on 
reading music before you move on to the next level. And you can also use Songbook 3, this one here, to practice reading music. Also, the good thing is, is that Songbook 3 is gonna be the exact level, so you don't wanna be learning to read music when the music is far too, dif far too difficult for you as well, which is exactly where Songbook 3 uh, comes into play. <laughs> Moving on, stage five, advancing and enhancing. At this point, I feel that you've kind of broken the seal, so to speak. You now have a basic understanding of music and theory, enough that you know it will get you going and you can read music. Yay! I should add, it is crucial that you do not move on to anything until you have mastered the previous lesson. So I'm not just talking about the stage we are at now, but I'm just talking about um, just in general, it's, it's cumulative information. So do not move on, there is absolutely no rush. If you're having trouble with the current stage that you're on, you've moved on too fast. Go back, try and get ahead of the game, go back over old pieces to you know try and master them, and then you can move on. So now we're on to learn to play the piano book four, this one here. There are just a few more bits and bobs that I think you need to know before totally moving on or moving on on your own. Things like, how to make the music great, for example. So there are a few more scales, which are gonna be harder as well, using black notes and uh, slightly different fingering. There's more di more dexterity, dynamics, staccato, slurs, etc., etc. It's 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 all in book four. And again, once you've got through the tutorial book four, move on to song book four, because you don't, you wanna be practicing what you've just learned you know, at that kind of level. Also as well, my music that I have on my Patreon page will probably be a good level for you. If you didn't know that I have a Patreon page, um, www.patreon.com forward slash the online piano tutor, I will link it underneath as well. That's basically um, almost like a subscription service where you pay $1 a month, which is nothing, and you get access to everything I release on the feed. Um, so I release quite a lot of sheet music every month, at least four pieces for piano every month, so generally one a week, um, and about between four and eight pieces for the violin every week. But at this stage, you'll be able to play pretty much any of the piano pieces that I have on Patreon. <laughs> and then stage six. Basically, you're just off, off and away here. So you've finished my, my piano complete collection course po uh, at this point, and I think you've, you should have reached a very good and decent kind of medium stroke intermediate level here where you can go off on your own and play and learn almost any piece of music that you might like. I'm not saying that you're gonna master those pieces of music in 20 minutes, but they're certainly not gonna be foreign to you. You will at least be able to look at the music and properly decipher all the notes, the dots, the dashes, the lines, and all that kind of thing. And you're not gonna be phased and you know, you're gonna be able to understand what you're looking at basically. Even though I said I was gonna add some more resources and, and information and, and things like that under, you know, in, in, in this PDF and, and in this video, I think, generally I think I'm not a super huge believer in all these exercise books, if I'm totally honest. I am someone who, I guess this was the way that I was taught, but I, I truly believe that scales, arpeggios, chromatics, broken chords, contrary motion scales, um, playing in thirds, six octaves, I think all those technical exercises contain everything you need to know to become a competent player. Basically, it's, I guess the, the exercises, you've got the Zerny exercises, the Hannon exercises, you, you've got a few other bits and bobs that you can do. They are basically based on um, scales, arpeggios, broken chords, but they may be done in a slightly more melodic way, so you're not, just running up scales, da 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 da. So you're not doing that all the time. But personally, for me, I actually enjoy that. So I would just rather do that and mix it up a bit myself than than really have to sit down and and learn exercises. I think I can get all the fingering exercises that I need from doing those scales, arpeggios, broken chords, chromatics, country motions, third, six, octaves. I feel I can get everything I need from that and I don't need a book to tell me how to do those. So I know a lot of people do like them and that's great, I'm absolutely not dissing them. If you like them and that's the way you wanna learn, go ahead and do that. For me personally, that isn't the great way that I, le I like to learn and I, I teach my students the same way that I do and you know they grow up loving scales. I, I personally love scales and you know. So again, in terms of timings, um, because 
I feel like the piano is just set out slightly differently. I don't feel like you should be learning things in certain times. So for example, uh, unlike the violin where it's quite repetitive and you are learning very meticulous things, it's very easy for me to say, right, it's gonna take you one week to learn how to isolate the strings because I can give you a time on that. I, I know how long that's gonna take for someone to do. Whereas the piano is much broader than that. I can't tell you how long that's gonna take. So I couldn't tell you how long it's gonna take you to get through book one but you know it might take someone a month to get through book one or maybe you're completely new and it's going to take you something like six months to a year also depends on how much time you can dedicate to it as well again how this differs to the violin is that you are physically holding a violin i know i don't have any strings on this but just ignore that so the whole holding the instrument is 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 something to battle with as well whereas the piano everything's laid out in front of you and you're just sitting there and you're just plonking your your hands on the keys so that's why putting timings on things is very difficult and not only that it's a lot I don't want to say a lot less structured but the violin in the beginning is very very structured you must learn this then you must learn this then you must learn that so it is very much cut into kind of bite-sized pieces and technical things that you must learn pretty much at a certain time in a certain order i hope you have found this video useful don't forget that the pdf here with more details is going to be linked directly underneath and i'll have links to my books and everything so you don't have to go hunting for them and any other resources and things that i can find i'll have them linked directly in that pdf as well so Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening, listening to me ramble on for so long and I will see you in my next video. Bye.